Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, video which uh, will incorporate both uh, pricing concepts and, and strategies. And so I'm only going to spend one video talking about uh, uh, pricing and you say, well, God, Murph, you spent three videos talking about place and one of which was logistics and you're only going to spend one video talking about uh, pricing concepts and, and strategies and yes that's the that's the ugly truth of the matter I'm only going to spend one video on uh, on on pricing um, what we're going to do in this uh, in in this uh, discussion is we're going to uh, define what is meant by price we're going to uh, discuss some pricing concepts using the uh, the five C framework that your uh, that your book talks about. It's an excellent framework for uh, <clears throat> discussing pricing. Uh, we're going to briefly discuss uh, pricing strategies, and then we will uh, look at uh, some pricing tactics that, that that go along with the uh, with the pricing strategies. So again, the first thing we're going to do is is we are going to define what is meant by price and and price a definition of price is the sum of all values that customers are willing to give up in order to gain benefit from a good or a service. <clears throat> so again, the sum of all values that customers are willing to give up in order to gain benefit from a good or service. And and what you know, we're we're really familiar with money being a component of price, right? You know, you know and, and as an example, uh, to take this class, uh, you pay John Carroll tuition, which is just another, just a fancy word they use in academia for uh, for price, right? You pay John Carroll a certain amount of money, right, in exchange for you know this wonderful knowledge <laughs> that you were getting in uh, in in marketing 301 but one of the key things with price is is that it does not have to involve money now in, you know in today's world it it, it does but you, you know you don't have to go back that far in in you know world history uh, to, to find where where people you know set prices on things, but the price didn't involve money. And so, you know, if we go back 500 years, and you know, you're you're sitting there and you're saying, well, well, Murfer, if 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 I give you four cows, will you uh, will you teach me about marketing 301? And I would say, well, no, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. But if you give me five cows, right? If you give me five cows, we 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 got a deal. So price doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to involve money, but of course uh, that's the that's that's the currency that we're uh, that that we're most familiar with. And another thing about price is that it is an extremely flexible component of the marketing mix, and and that flexibility has been exacerbated by uh, uh, advances in technology. And, uh, you know, you, you think about, and, and you're going to have a discussion board on, on um, pricing flexibility, uh, actually. But, you, you know, you think about uh, something like Amazon, where you go and you look at the price of something on Amazon at, let's say, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's one price, and you, 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 if you were to go back at six o'clock in the evening, it might be a very different price. And a lot of that is based on demand and, and supply and, and, and things of that nature. But price is really is a really flexible component of the marketing mix. And you know, classic example, and I think I had alluded to this in a previous uh, in a previous video, is you know, kind of the gas stations that are across the street from each other. You know, one of the gas stations decides to either raise or lower prices, and the other gas station oftentimes follows uh, within a short period of within a short period of time. All right, so let's take let's spend a little bit of time talking about uh, pricing concepts, and um, <clears throat> you know, pricing concepts can be influenced by. Uh, macro environmental factors, um, you know, to include uh, technology, uh, to include economic conditions, 
Uh, and so when we talk about pricing concepts, we have to you know keep in mind that that there's a you know that there's a bigger picture out there, um, and that that some of the stuff that we talk about may be influenced by you know stuff that's out of the control of a uh, you know of a particular uh, organization. And as I mentioned a little earlier in this video. The book uses the the so-called 5C framework, and and the 5C framework, and and you can refer to the book uh, for the 5C framework uh, includes company objectives, customers, cost, competition, and and channel members. And so, in terms of company objectives, you might look at uh, exhibit at least in my version of the book, which is a fifth edition. Uh, exhibit 14.2 talks about uh, you know, is is your organization, for example, are they looking to maximize market share, or are you looking to maximize uh, profit? And those might uh, those two objectives. And we're not saying that one is right and one is wrong, but if you're looking to maximize market share, you might be going after a a lower uh, uh, price for a product. Right. Whereas if you're looking to maximize profit, you might be charging a, a higher price. And again, we're not saying that one is right or one is wrong, but one of the things that 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 needs to be kept in mind when a company is, uh, you know, trying to figure out how it's going to price its products is, uh, you know, what are we trying to achieve as a, as an organization? A second C involves. Uh, customers and, and and customers brings in the concept of wonderful demand curves and demand elasticities and you may have you know nightmares going back to uh, econ 201 and 202 about all those fun things with uh, demand curves and demand elasticities you know it, there's there's practicality there and particularly with respect to demand elasticities because if you're you know, if, if you're a marketer and you discover that you have a segment or multiple segments that have inelastic demand, right, that basically means inelastic demand means that, uh, you know, changes in price will have a relatively small impact on, uh, on demand. You know, if you're, if you're a, a, an organization and you have uh, a segment or segments that characterized by inelastic demand, you probably don't want to drop your price. Right, because you're not gonna, you know, that's not gonna generate a great deal of additional demand. Conversely, if you got inelastic demand, you'd be able to raise your price uh, and, and without substantially impacting demand. So having an understanding of of customers and in terms of again different segments who would have different uh, different uh, demand elasticity. So an example that I like to use. You know, to illustrate the demand elasticity thing is if you get on an airplane, all right, sometimes you got people that are traveling for pre for pleasure, easy for me to say, and then you got people who are traveling for business and, and the pleasure travelers, right, the people who are flying, let's say, from Cleveland down to Orlando to go to Disney World, right, they're going for, uh, you know, they're going for fun and they're probably very uh, price sensitive or they're price elastic. On the other hand, the business person is flying from Cleveland down to Orlando. Right, time is more important for that person than money, and as a result, they're 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 gonna they're they're they are gonna be a more price inelastic segment, and and so we can you know we can play some fun games, and you know again because time is more important than money, you you might see a really really high airfare charge to a, to the to the business traveler segment, whereas the the the, the leisure traveler segment isn't gonna come anywhere close to paying that uh, that amount of money. Um, a third, uh, a third C in the five C framework associated with prices is cost, right? And 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 so this requires the having an understanding of of fixed cost, variable cost, marginal cost, and total cost, right? And fixed costs are costs that don't vary with output, and and variable costs are costs that vary with with output, and total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost, and marginal cost is the cost of adding an additional unit. Uh, uh, of production and 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 <clears throat> an understanding of cost in, in terms of how they're going to you know how they're going to influence uh, uh, or how they could potentially impact price because you know not every organization is going to price its product 
uh, on the basis of average cost. But what an organization doesn't want to do is it doesn't want to price its product at less than variable cost because if you're pr pr uh, pricing it less than variable cost, first of all, you're not covering your variable cost. And second of all, you're not making any contribution to your fixed cost. And so having an understanding of, of the cost structure uh, is, is important for pricing as well. The a fourth C in the 5C framework involves uh, involves competition and and one of the aspects there and is is you know what kind of industry from a, a market structure perspective is my business in right so what kind of industry from a market structure perspective is my business in and so you know if you're in a monopoly right you go I've died and gone to heaven because I just sit there and you know I can price whatever I pretty much at whatever I want to price because the customer doesn't have a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of choice. You know, another market structure is is monopolistic competition. You say, oh my God, Doc, it's starting to sound like Econ Two Hundred One and Two Hundred Two all over again. Well, there you go, right? Um, and monopolistic competition is there's a lot of price competition in in, in markets that uh, that are monopolistically. Uh, competitive. So having an understanding of the market that you're dealing with uh, has an impact on, on price as well. And then uh, the, the, the fifth C in, involves channel members. And, and, and I think one of the things to, to consider with pricing with respect to channel members is, is the idea that, that um, you know, if you're going to, uh, if you're part of a channel, you're an organization, you're part of a channel, right? Are you guys, you guys being the different channel parties, are you guys on the same page? And I'm using guys generically. I'm not trying to be misogynistic in my use of, uh, of guys. And so one of the things is, is, is that, you know, one of, the, one of the challenges that could occur is that if you get into a channel and, 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 and you're part of a channel and, and let's say that you're, you know, one of your goals is to, is to pursue market share, whereas you have a channel partner that wants to, um, you know, that wants to pursue profit maximization, that could, that could create some, that could create some tension uh, and, and some challenges in terms of, uh, in terms of pricing. So like I said, you know, the pricing concepts in terms of the five C's, the book does a wonderful job of, of, of talking about the various pricing concepts. And, and so one of the things to take away from this is it's a multi, you know, pricing is a multifaceted, uh, a component and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of moving parts of company objectives and customers and cost and competition and and channel members and and, and, and things of that nature okay so next thing we said we'd uh, spend a little bit of time on is is pricing strategies and this is uh, this simply refers to the an organization's long-term approach to uh, setting prices and so there are three right there are three basic, uh, pricing strategies that organizations can pursue. There's the cost-based strategy, and I'll, I'll leave it to your imagination what the driving force behind cost-based strategy is, is. Is you know the primary driver in cost-based strategies is cost. Right? There's also value-based strategies, and that takes more of a demand uh, focus as opposed to a supply focus. A cost-based strategy tends to have more of a supply focus, uh, cost of resources, right? Value-based is looking more from a demand perspective. You don't ignore cost, right? When you're looking, as, as I said earlier in, in the discussion, you don't ignore cost, but what you're more focused on in, in value-based strategies, you're more focused on, on, on pricing from a uh, from a demand or from a customer perspective. And so, you know, you see things like that <clears throat> value meals and, and, and things of that nature are an example of a value based uh, strategy. And then a third, uh, a third uh, generic pricing strategy involves competition based strategies. And really the driver there is, is, is competition. And it's not to say that these can't 
right? These can't, you know, kind of, you know, in certain situations or with some segments, you might focus on a cost-based strategy. In another segment, you might focus on competition. And in a third one, you might, uh, you might focus on a, uh, on a value-based, uh, on a value-based strategy. And so within the, the strategies, there are a variety of tactics, right? Whenever you have strategies, you got tactics. And there's a variety of strat, uh, excuse me, of tactics uh, that can be used. And the difference between strategy and tactics is, is, is that strategy tends to be a longer term focus. Tactics are shorter term focus. And so there are a number of different types of pricing tactics that organizations can use. Um, and we'll look at uh, we'll look at a few of them. One is uh, one is the infamous quantity discounts. And I, you know, and I don't know how many of you. And quantity discounts are exactly what they sound like, right? You you get a discount for buying in uh, buying in larger quantities. And if you remember, uh, in the uh, in the logistics discussion, I, I told you uh, I, I relayed the anecdote of the uh, the uh, the pro bono consulting I had done for uh, one of the satellite locations for the uh, for the Cleveland Clinic. And you know, the the God God bless them. You know, they had gotten a great deal on 250 boxes of of, of something and and you know so they went out and bought 250 boxes of something that they only you know only needed five a year for maybe that's not quite as bad because after I gave that example and after I was thinking about it I thought about back when I was uh, back when I was in college and I was working a summer job with the Department of Agriculture <clears throat> and my my boss um uh, he gave me all sorts of crazy jobs, but one job he gave me, he said, Paul, he said, you know, we got a, we got a bunch of, uh, we got a bunch of uh, storage sheds. And he said, I didn't want you to go out and I want you to go into the storage sheds and find out what are in the storage sheds. Now, you got to understand something. This is like 1973, 1974. So this is a long time ago, right? So there are no barcodes or anything like that. So I got out to this one storage shed, and 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 I know I'm getting off topic a little bit, but it's it 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 ties in with quantity discounts. And I go out to this one storage shed, and it's just like nothing but boxes in this storage shed. And I open up, you know, I open up a box, and this thing is like packed, right? And it's like an eight by eight storage shed, you know, one of those like aluminum. Well, it used they used to be aluminum. They're much nicer now, but you know, back in the day, back in the late '60s and early '70s, like aluminum storage sheds. You you know, if you had an aluminum storage shed in your house. You had died and gone to heaven, kind of stuff. We had a bunch of them at the particular uh, group that I worked with at the uh, at the Department of Agriculture in. Um I was actually in Beltsville, Maryland. It wasn't in D.C., but it was. Uh, it was a you know, Beltsville is a is in Prince George's County, which is in a suburb of, uh, of of D.C. So, you know, I go like I said, I go out to this one storage shed and I open it up, and there's some there's a whole bunch of boxes in there, right? And I open up a box, and there's a whole bunch of tweezers in the box. And I said, "Ooh, there's a bunch of tweezers in this box." So I start pulling a few boxes, open up another box. I mean, it's nothing but there's nothing but boxes in this storage shed that had tweezers in it, right? And 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 so I went back to my boss and I said, hey, hey, Dr. Cantwell, the guy's name was George Cantwell. I said, Dr. Cantwell, you know, I won storage shed and nothing but tweezers. I said, my God, he said, that I, I said, there's got to be like 144 boxes in there and they're full of tweezers. And he says, yeah, he said, uh, Paul, I said, we got a great deal on tweezers. I said, yeah, he said, and then we had to go out and buy the storage shed. Right. My point being that that basically they, you know, they decided now there were 17 people in our group. Right. 17 people in our group. There was like 144 boxes of tweezers. Right. And, you know, we're talking big boxes of tweezers. I mean, there was enough tweezers anyway. I'm getting crazy here. But but bottom line is they got this great deal because you buy in, you know, you buy in quantity and you get, you know, the larger the quantity you buy in, the better the price. So quantity discounts is a uh, is a is a pricing tactic. Yes. <clears throat> If you ever wondered why sometimes your taxes are so high in the United States, it's because the federal government sometimes didn't know a lot about uh, you know logistics and stuff like that. A second uh, a second pricing tactic involves uh, is what is known as product bundle pricing, and this refers to two or more complementary products offered as a bundle, and the price of the bundle is less than if the products were sold individually. You say, what the heck did you just say? So product bundle pricing is where two or more complementary products are offered as a bundle, and the price of the bundle is less than if the products were sold individually. So one of the things that, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, if you go into, you know, certain uh, fast food 
restaurants and 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 I'll just use I just use McDonald's as an example. But you know, if you buy a Big Mac and fries and a Coke, you know, if you bought a Big Mac a fry and a Coke, you you might pr uh, pay one thing. But if you buy the Big Mac fry and Coke combo, generally that's that's a cheaper price. That's an example of product bundle pricing. Right, uh, technology in terms of like if you have a cable TV provider, you might also get your internet and you might also get your phone service. So you put cable TV and phone and internet together. That's an example of product bundle pricing in the sense that by purchasing the three things, the internet service, the uh, um, the phone service and the cable service together, the, the price of the three of them together is less than if you bought each one of them uh, individually. It's called product bundle pricing. Excuse me. And the third pricing tactic that we can talk about is what is known as captive product pricing. And this refers to the price of a product that must be used with another product. Right, so the price of a product that must be used with another product. So, classic example because I'm a male, right? Classic example is razors and razor blades, right? Although that's start, this is starting to change a little bit <clears throat> with companies like Harry's and 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 things of that nature. But what would happen is you get the razor really inexpensively, right? And then the razor blades would like be really expensive, right? Cell phones and cell phone plans. Smartphone, smartphone plans, right? Similar kind of thing, right? You, you can get sometimes, you can get the cell phone uh, relatively inexpensively, but the only way you're going to get the cell phone relatively inexpensively is if you buy generally, what, a two-year plan to go along with the cell phone that you're getting at a relatively inexpensive price. So what we've done in this video is, is uh, we've talked, uh, we've defined what's meant by price. We we talked about the, the pricing concepts from the 5C perspective. Um, we looked briefly at pricing strategy, and then we finished up with uh, pricing tactics. And I went on a crazy, crazy rant or anecdote about the crazy old uh, tweezers that were uh, that were in the storage shed back when I worked at the Department of Agriculture a long, long time ago. So I will see you for the first of the two discussions that we will have on. Uh, integrated marketing communications. Bye for now.